In this video, we'll be discussing perimeter and area of plane figures. So polygons are just two-dimensional shapes whose uh, border consists of a bunch of line segments, things like triangles and uh, quadrilaterals, rectangles, pentagons, etc. Uh, if you have n line segments, then we sometimes call it an n-gon. So a triangle is like an example of a three-gon. A uh, rectangle or quadrilateral is an example of a four-gon, pentagon, five-gon, uh, etc. And you have like a whole table of them if you're interested. You got hexagons, heptagons, octagons, nonagons, decagons, whatever. Uh, we can classify triangles into types. So such as equilateral triangles, where all of the side lengths are equal. Isosceles um, would be at least two of the side lengths are equal. Uh, under this definition, equilateral triangles are also isosceles because, you know, three is at least two. Scalene is completely different. That's when all three of your side lengths are different from each other. Uh, acute triangles. Um, is talking about the angles. All, if all three of the angles in the triangle are less than 90 degrees, then we call it acute. Um, if that's not the case, uh, then either one of your angles is equal to 90 or greater than 90. If it's greater than 90, you call it obtuse. If it's equal to 90, you call it a right triangle. Uh, we do a similar classification with quadrilaterals, although, you know, there's obviously going to be more going on with quadrilaterals because, you know, four sides is uh, more than three. Uh, we have parallelograms, which is when opposite sides are parallel. Um, a consequence of the opposite, opposite sides being parallel is that they will also be equal in length. Um, but the definition just says that the opposite sides are parallel. Uh, rectangles, the definition is that all of the angles in the uh, quadrilateral are 90 degrees. Rhombus, we require that all of the all four of the side lengths are equal. Um, a square is just a uh, quadrilateral that is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So all the angles are 90 degrees and all of the side lengths are equal. Okay, so rhombus plus rectangle equals square. Uh, trapezoid, um, just two parallel sides. Uh, some people specify that the opposites, that the other sides are like specifically not parallel to each other. Some people don't care. Some people would consider a parallelogram a special case of a trapezoid. Most people, um, or more often than not, I see people say that parallelograms are specifically not trapezoids. Trapezoids is only one pair of parallel sides. Um, isosceles trapezoid is a specific type of trapezoid. It's just the trapezoid whose non-parallel sides, you know, these guys here, have equal length. So if these two side lengths are equal, then you call it an isosceles trapezoid. Uh, here's a diagram that I really like for understanding how everything sort of fits into each other in quadrilaterals. So this, like, giant bubble represents all quadrilaterals. Um, and then you have like the bubble of trapezoids over here. So, um, so anything that is a trapezoid has to also be a quadrilateral because you know trapezoids always have four sides. But there are quadrilaterals out there that are not trapezoids. So like this quadrilateral does not have any parallel sides, so it's not a trapezoid. It's also not a parallelogram, so it's not going to lie in the parallelogram bubble. But anything that is an isosceles trapezoid has to be a trapezoid to begin with. Um, so anything in the isosceles trapezoid bubble is also inside the trapezoid bubble. Um, trapezoids and parallelograms are completely distinct. Trapezoids have only one pair of parallel sides. Uh, parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. Um, and so um, under that definition, which of course you could change the definition, some people do, uh, under that definition, these two bubbles don't intersect at all. Whereas if you look at the parallelogram bubble, you know, there are parallelograms that are not rectangles or rhombuses like this one here. Um, the angles are not 90 degrees and the side lengths are not all equal. Um, but 
everything that is a rectangle must necessarily be a parallelogram, and anything that is a rhombus must also necessarily be a parallelogram. Uh, rectangles and rhombuses could be different, like this rectangle is not a rhombus, and this rhombus is not a rectangle. But if you have something that is a rhombus and a rectangle, um, so something that lies inside of both bubbles, then it has to be a square, because to be a square just means, you know, uh, the angles are 90 degrees and the side lengths are all equal. That's just what it means to be a square. Uh, the perimeter of a two-dimensional shape is just the length along its border. So it's like, think of it as like a distance traveled. So if you were to just start at some random point on like the square here and then just walk around the side lengths or walk around the outside, the perimeter is how far did you travel. You'll usually have some sort of units attached to that, like how many feet or whatever, um, but it's just like the distance that you're traveling along the border. So for example, if you wanted to measure the perimeter of a rectangle, so you need to know the side lengths. So this side length is A. Uh, if it's a rectangle, then this side length over here is also A, and this side length up here is also B. And if you wanted to measure the perimeter, you could just simply do like, well, it just doesn't really matter where you start. So you might as well start here and travel along here. You go A, then plus B, then plus A, then plus B. So A plus B plus A plus B is equal to your perimeter. You could combine the A's and the B's together to get that the perimeter is 2A plus 2B. Uh, similar thing for parallelograms, your opposite side lengths are equal. So similar thing to the rectangle case. Um, and then your perimeter, again, is just going to be equal to um, 2A plus 2B. Uh, and then for a square, all four of your side lengths are equal. So we'll just call all of those S. And then the perimeter would just be uh, S plus S plus S plus S, or just equal to 4S. In this example, let's suppose that the perimeter of this following parallelogram is 20 feet, and the bottom side length is 4 feet. Let's find the length of the remaining sides. Uh, so a little bit of this information is kind of free. Um, so opposite side lengths have to be equal, so I can just right away say that B is equal to 4. And C, whatever C is going to be equal to, like it's just going to be equal to the same thing that A is equal to. So C and A are equal. Um, and then we can then say that the perimeter is equal to A plus B plus C plus 4, um, or just replacing out B with 4 and C with A we can say that it's equal to 2 times 4 plus 2 times a. Um, also, the perimeter is told to us to be 20 feet. So I can say 20 is equal to 2 times 4 plus 2 times a. All right, 2 times 4 is 8. And then now we just need to solve for a. So let's subtract 8 on both sides. We get 12 is equal to 2a. And we divide by 2 on both sides. We get that 6 is equal to a. I'll write this a equals six and now we're pretty much done so a is six feet um, b we figured out at the beginning is equal to six feet as well and c is equal to a which is also six feet let's suppose that a farmer needs to fence in a 20 foot by 30 foot rectangular yard uh, fencing can be bought at 30 dollars per 15 feet how much money will the farmer have to spend? So I recommend pausing and um, giving this problem a shot and then comparing your answer with mine. So first thing we need to do is figure out the perimeter. And the perimeter is going to be 2 times 20 plus 2 times 30. You could always do this as, you could always like factor out a 2 from this. You could do 2 times 20 plus 30. Um, which is 2 times 50. 2 times 50 is 100. So the perimeter is 100, um, and this is measured in feet. And fencing can only be bought in 15 feet chunks. Uh, so you can't buy like two thirds of one of these or anything like that. So what you could do, basically you wanna figure out how many times does 15 go into um, 100. Uh, and then 
So you could do this with long division, you could do this with a calculator, or what I'm going to do is just kind of think of it in terms of multiplication. So if I just count off by 15s, so 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, I can kind of see like, okay, this is here I bought two, here I bought three, four, five, six, seven packs of fencing. And once I buy seven, now that is just enough to cover the entire 100 feet of perimeter and you'll just have five left over. You can't stop at six because then you're missing 10 feet of fencing, so you have to buy seven. So we need seven packs of fencing. So this is gonna cost the farmer must spend um, seven times the price of each pack, which is equal to 210 total dollars. So the farmer has to spend $210 here. Let's move on to circles. So everyone is familiar with circles, hopefully, um, but you know, not everyone necessarily knows the definition of a circle. A circle, by definition, is the collection of points in two-dimensional space. I'm leaving off some words from this definition because I want I don't want to be like too rigorous or anything here, but it's just a set of points in two-dimensional space that are a fixed distance from a given center point. So you have you start with a spent a center and then you specify a radius, like a distance um, to the center or to distance from the center. And any point that is that distance from the center, will lie on the circle. And the circle is just the collection of all those points. Um, the diameter uh, is, some people define diameter as like the distance between any, sorry, the, sorry, some people define the diameter as um, just twice the radius. Um, and that's a perfectly fine definition for this kind of thing. Um, another more mathematical definition for reasons that we won't get into here, um, would be the maximum distance between two points on the circle. So for example, if I pick these two points in the circle, um, this distance right here is not the maximum distance between two points in the circle because these two points over here, if I were to measure that distance between those two points, that distance is bigger than that other distance, right? And there's no other pair of points on the circle that I could pick that would give me a larger distance. Like I could pick like these two points over here, which would have the same distance, um, but it, I can't do any better than that. Um, and just by chance, it happens to be the case that like this maximum distance always like has to go through that center point. And so that's why the diameter is equal to two times the radius. Um, yeah, and uh, I kind of out loud said what radius is. Radius is just distance from the center to like a point on the circle. So the radius, um, so the diameter is equal to two times the radius. Uh, also circumference, I didn't say circumference uh, earlier even though it was on the slide. The circumference is just the distance around the circle. So think of it as just like the perimeter of a circle. I ha still like have no idea why we don't just call circumference like the perimeter of a circle. Um, I don't know what the point of having a special word for circumference is. Um, maybe just because circles are just such an important thing in math um, that people just wanted there to be a special word. But yeah, I, I tried doing some digging and I wasn't really able to figure out uh, why we specifically have a special word for the perimeter of a circle when we don't really have that for like other sorts of things, like triangles or whatever. Anyway, not too important. Um, so in terms of like circumference, uh, a lot of people know that you know circumference is equal to two pi r, um, but not everyone necessarily knows like what is pi. They know you know it's roughly equal to like three point one four, or um, you know maybe you know more digits. Uh, or 22 over 7, it's, it's roughly equal to that as well. Um, but those are just approximations. How is it really defined? Um, well, it's defined in terms of circles. Um, so if you were to just take some arbitrary circle 
and measure its circumference and measure its diameter and then divide the circumference by the diameter, then pi is just equal to what you get when you do that quotient or that ratio. So just measure circumference, measure the diameter, and then divide C over D, and that gives you the number pi. And so that is specifically how we define the number pi. Um, what is maybe somewhat surprising about this is that how big your circle is doesn't matter. Um, so if you were to have a different circle and measure like a different circumference and the different diameter, and then still do C prime over D prime, so that new circumference over that new diameter, that this quotient and this quotient are going to give you the exact same value. They're both going to be roughly equal to 3.14159, whatever. Um, and so a consequence of this definition is the circumference formula that, that a lot of people are familiar with, that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, or the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. If pi is defined to be circumference over diameter, you just multiply the di by the diameter on both sides, and then you literally just get from here to here that the circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Um, if you were to replace the diameter with 2 times the radius, then this equation then becomes pi times 2 times the radius, or just putting the 2 out in front, circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So as a quick example, what is the circumference of a circle whose diameter is 15 inches? Well, the circumference is equal to pi times diameter, or pi times 15. And so, and this is in inches, and so, you know, this would be our answer. If we wanted to get like an approximation of our answer, maybe we just wanted to have like some decimal because sometimes decimals are easier to work with. Well, let me pull up my computer just to use a calculator here. Um, so pi is roughly 3.14 or whatever. I'm just going to type into my um, calculator on my computer, 15 times pi. I'll just type in pi, the letters and get that it's roughly equal to 47.12 inches. And I'll just round to the nearest hundredth here. Okay, so this is this is um, a strictly less accurate answer than this over here. Um, that's why I just write approximately equal to. Uh, this over here is an exact answer. You can leave a lot of your answers just in this form and this is correct. It is not a bad thing to leave it like this. Um, it's also not bad to do this. Some people prefer the exact answer and some people pref prefer the approximate answer. And which one is better is really dependent on the situation that you are in and what you need it for. If you're doing rocket science, like you're probably gonna wanna have the exact answer. Uh, if you're just like trying to um, estimate something or like estimate like the cost of something or whatever, then maybe the decimal approximate answer will be more useful to you in that situation. Uh, let's say that a tire has a radius of two feet. How many feet does the tire travel when it makes five revolutions? So here I have this tire and if I'm going to make it do five revolutions, well, let's, let's first think, like, if I'm going to do one revolution, um, well, how far is it going to travel? Well, it's just going to travel whatever its circumference is. So if it's going to travel one revolution, you could sort of just think of it as just unraveling this circle. Um, if it's going to do one full revolution, you know, it starts, this bottom point starts right here, and then... Uh, if it does one full revolution, it'll just end up back where it started, so it travels whatever the circumference is. So if it's going to do five revolutions, then the distance traveled is going to be equal to five times the circumference. And what is the circumference? The circumference, so here we have the radius. Um, the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, 2 pi times the radius. And if the radius is 2, 
uh, to feet, then this is equal to 4 pi feet, combining the 2 with the 2. So the total distance traveled is equal to 5 times 4 pi feet, or 20 pi, which is um, roughly equal to what? So let's go to my calculator again and type in 20 pi, and that's telling me that it's roughly equal to 62.83 uh, feet. And again, I'll just round to the nearest hundredth. There's not like any good reason why I would round to the nearest hundredth over something else, but you know, this is fine. Mm. Okay. All right, so to review, the distance traveled is just going to be 5 times the circumference. The circumference is 2 pi r, which equals 4 pi. 4 pi times 5 gives us the total distance traveled, and then we can approximate that as 62.83. All right, last thing is uh, we're going to cover area, which is just the amount of space um, that a two-dimensional uh, shape uh, takes up. So some common area formulas that you'll see. So like for a rectangle, like you have your base and your height, uh, the area is just going to be equal to base times height. Uh, for a square, this is just a special case of rectangles. Um, so area is gonna be base times height. And if those side lengths are the same, S times S is just equal to S squared. For a parallelogram, um, your base, you'll still have your base, um, but you actually don't care about what this side length over here is. What you do care about is what the height is. And the height is obtained by just taking a point on one side of the parallelogram and then drop, dropping a perpendicular from that side to the base. So drop this perpendicular line, makes a right angle with it. And if it does that, um, well, what can we notice? So do this little triangle. Okay, so, so let's say that we were to take this triangle over here. And let's say that we wanted to uh, cut that part of the triangle off. That's not what I want. Huh. There we go. Okay, so if we were to take this part of the tr of the parallelogram and just cut it off from it, and then just move it over here, so now we no longer have that part. That part is now moved over here. And then what is left? Well, we have a rectangle. And what are the dimensions of this rectangle? Well, the base is still going to be B. And the height is going to be h, and so our area is going to be just base times height. Uh, trapezoid, the argument would be kind of similar, um, except instead of doing like base times height, well, you have two different bases. So what you can do is actually just take the average of these two bases. So a and b, just find their average. The average of two numbers, a and b, is just a plus b divided by 2, and take that average and multiply it by h. And that would be your area. Some people will write this as uh, a plus b times h all over 2. It's all the same. It doesn't really matter. And the area formula for a circle is just pi times radius squared. So let's now suppose that the area of the following trapezoid is 50 square inches. Um, oh, sorry, these, sh these should have been inches. Uh, find the length of the base. All right, so this is 8 inches, this is 5 inches, and we don't know what this base is. What we do know is that the area is equal to um, the average of these two numbers times the height. So we do 8 plus b and then average it by dividing by 2 and then multiply by the height 5. Um, also we don't have to say a, we actually know that the area is just 50, so we'll just say that this is equal to 50. And now we have this equation 
where we want to solve for b. So I have a 5 over here, so I'm just going to divide both sides by 5. So the left side, 50 over 5 is equal to 10. On the right side, the 5's cancel, and I get just 8 plus b over 2. Uh, now I want to get rid of this 2, so I'll just multiply by 2 on both sides. So we get 20 on the left, and then these 2's uh, we'll just cancel, and we're left with 8 plus b on the right. And then we just subtract 8 on both sides and get 12 is equal to b. So b is 12, uh, and we'll keep this in inches. Uh, oops, forgot to erase that. Uh, OK, so let's suppose that we have this circular rug. forgot to write circular. We have a circular rug that is covering 500 square feet. Uh, we want to know, will this rug fit into a 15 by 15 uh, square area? These um, 15s are measured in feet as well. A couple typos here. Sorry about that. Um, OK, so the area is 500 square feet. So, um, so let's say that we have some 15 by 15 uh, square foot area. Okay. Um, so if we were to do this, uh, okay, so that here the area is 500 square feet. Well, what's the area of like this square area over here? Well, the area here is equal to 15 times 15. Um, what is 15 times 15? That is 225 square feet. Okay, so here we have 225 square feet, and if we want to fit 500 square feet into 225 square feet, that's just not going to happen, right? It's just impossible. This is too big to fit inside that area. But, you know, let's, let's change the problem a little bit. Let's change this from 15 by 15 to um, instead, what about a 25 by 25? Sorry, 25 by 25. All right, so at 25 by 25, well, what's the area of a 25 by 25 um, square foot area? Well, 25 by 25 is equal to 625 square feet. All right, so what do you think? Do you think... The answer is yes, this will fit into this 25 by 25 square foot area. Um, so it's trickier than you think. So let's say that we were to take this and fit this in here. Do that. Okay, cool. So if we were to fit this circular rug into this square area, so even though we have 625 square feet um, in the square here, we aren't utilizing necessarily all of that 625 square feet of space because these four corner areas are kind of getting cut off from us, right? So we don't get to utilize all 625 square feet. So, um, what could we do? So there's a couple ways of, of doing this. I'll just, I'll just show you one. Um, if you're able to come up with like a different way of thinking about this, then, you know, great. I'm just going to try to keep the video short. So let's think about like, well, what would this radius be? Because if we knew what the radius was, um, well, this radius has to be uh, in such a way that, you know, two times the radius has to be no bigger than 25. So we want two times the radius to be smaller than 25 in order for this to work. Well, the area is 500, and that has to be equal to the area of the circle, which is pi times radius squared. So 500 over pi, so dividing by pi on both sides, is equal to the radius squared. And then I can take the square root of both sides and say that r is equal to the square root of 500 over pi. If I were to go to my calculator and do square root of 500 over pi, 
that gives me roughly 12.6156626. So I'll just write 62 um, feet. Okay, so about 12.62 feet. So that radius is 12.62 feet. So is that going to fit over here? Well, if this is 12.62, then um, this total distance right here, or I'll, I'll just do it vertically just so it's not like overlapping, um, that would just be two times that. So if I were to take that number and double it, um, that gives me 25 point uh, hold up. Four two point two four. Yeah. Okay. Point two four. Twenty five point two four. Um, I was getting confused because if if I double if I double this number on my calculator, I get twenty five point two three. But if I double the approximation, I get 25.24, so slightly different numbers. So I was just, I was just getting thrown off by that. It doesn't really matter. Um, so this, um, this diameter here would be like 25.24, which is bigger than 25. So this is actually exceeding um, this 25 by 25 um, area here. So if we were trying to fit it in a 26 by 26 uh, area, that would work, but 25 by 25, that's too small. So it has to be, um, the, the length of the square has to be like at least 25.24. And realistically, probably a little bit bigger than that. So like 20, 26 is probably what I would do. All right, we'll end the video there. Thank you for listening. Hope this helped and I'll see you in the next one.